subject title thought for this message is the one that was given to me. Doing more mm. than ever before. Mm. Doing more than ever before. Am I close now? Yes, sir. Amen. Yes, sir. For a subtitle, right. for those that are taking notes, uh -huh. let's share It's Harvest Time. It's harvest, it's harvest time. time. It's harvest time. Do me a favor. Tell your neighbor, it's harvest time. It's, it's harvest time. time. Oh, it is certainly it's harvest time. Harvest. It's harvest time. <laughs> when you think of harvest, when you think of harvest, you think of farmers. Yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. Pun intended. We are farmers. <laughs> and everything rises, Fabian, and falls on the harvest. Mm hmm when it comes to farming. Uh, the question becomes, will they keep the farm another year? Mm. You know what that depends on? The uh, harvest. harvest. A farmer can only go on so long without a harvest. Without a harvest, that's right, that's right. It can become a harvest farm. Dr. Crudup, and a harvest farm, a, a, a harvest farm does not need a harvest to exist. Mm -hmm. My brothers and sisters, it can become a harvest farm and a, a hobby farm. I'm afraid many of our churches have become hobby churches. Well, well. I said a hobby farm doesn't need a harvest to exist. Mm. I said some of our churches, unfortunately, have become harvest churches or hobby churches. So, so you see, everything depends on the harvest at harvest time. Mm -hmm. Truthfully, other things become secondary at harvest time. Mm. In other words, uh, people, uh, they don't look at uh, uh, harvest as souls and look at harvest as just members in the church. Mm. Truth of the matter is, there's a whole lot of people that come to church that are not members of your church, and a lot of people that are members of your church don't um, come. Oh, no. <laughs> don't come. Well, just want to accept and say, I'm going to do more. Than ever before. Than ever before. Come on, tell yourself, I'm gonna do more. I'm gonna do more. Than ever before. Than ever before. If y'all help me, you'll be out of here in less than 20 minutes. I said, tell yourself, I'm gonna do more. more. Than ever before. Than ever before. The thing my God said, doing more, meaning we gonna do more. So tell your neighbor, we gonna do more. We gonna do more. Than we've done before. Than we've we done before. Oh, Matthew chapter 9, verses 37 and 38, my brothers and sisters, Jesus quote these words because I believe the master is serious about harvest. harvest time. I believe the master is serious about souls because he said that he came to seek and save yeah. them yeah. which are lost. Right. Uh, and we're talking about harvest, and harvest time was the happiest time of the year. Well, right. well. Yeah, in Palestine, if you look at the Bible, when it was a harvest time, they always had religious feasts and festivals. Mm. In other words, they knew how to park. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And it didn't have to be New Year's. I can't right. about <laughs> uh, show me a church without a harvest, and I'll show you a church without joy. Well, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I said, show me a church without a harvest, and I'll show you a church without joy. No harvest? No joy. No, no joy. health. Watch this. Uh -huh. No health? Well, no joy. <laughs> No joy. Uh -huh. uh, Jesus probably not there. I can't get no help mm -hmm. around here. Because where Jesus is, there will be joy. joy. Yeah. Therefore, there must be harvest. Here it is, my first point. Glad you got to it fast, brother. I did. I did. <laughs> we have a tendency to postpone mm. the harvest. Well, yeah. well. John chapter 4, verse 35. Jesus makes some things clear that I want to bring out in this place on tonight. Because I want you to know it's in the book. I ain't making it up. Praise the Lord, somebody. Amen. Amen. John chapter 4, verse 35 reads thusly. It says this. It says, Say not ye, there are yet four months. Well, well. And then come the harvest. Mm. Behold, I say unto you, the lift heart. up your eyes. Yes, yes. Yeah. And look on the fields, for they are white. white. Yeah. Already. Already. <laughs> To harvest. Uh huh. Jesus said, Open your eyes, look and see, because now the harvest is plentiful. I can't get no help around here. Yes, Lift up your eyes. Yes, Why? Sir. Because your eyes are for you to see, but God gives you the vision. Mm -hmm. 
Ah, y'all just miss me right there. You think your eyes are for you, but God sees through your eyes. Amen. You keep saying somebody that's drunk, but God sees your deacon. You keep somebody that's a hoe, but God sees your person. You see, I can't get no help around. Oh, you got some help in here. Through your eyes. To see a harvest. Nothing will distract you more than harvest from a harvest than your own eye. Your own eyes. I said nothing would distract you like more from the harvest than your, own than your own eyes. You told that child they can't do this and they can't do that. You just called that child to not be one of your harvests. I, yeah. I don't know who I'm talking to tonight, but when you're always putting somebody down, all you're doing is causing your harvest to not grow. My, that my. very person can be the same one that's going to take your ministry from where it is to where God would have it to be. And not later, but now. Because the Bible says harvest is already ready. Already. We just behind the eight ball. We just haven't looked up our eyes yet. We keep looking down. I can't get no help around here. Yes, we looking down, despondent, depressed, and all the all the oppressed. But God wants us to look up and keep our eyes on the harvest. Because the harvest is plenteous. Yes, yeah. Uh-huh. But laborers. Yes. Are few. They are. They are fruit. First principle of the harvest is it is ready now. Right now. We just have to see it. Yeah. Y'all say we just have to see it through the eyes of God. Amen. Amen. Eyes off of ourselves. Mm. And eyes on the harvest. Mm. Eyes off of the ground and eyes mm. on, the on the harvest. Look to the fields, not just look at each other. I can't well, even around here. Yes, I told y'all before around here, some churches are keepers of the aquarium well, and not fishers of men. Come oh. on now. Oh. You're so worried about the few you got in the church well, and you don't care about the souls that's right outside on those sidewalks that need to be up in the house. Well, uh -huh. Look up to Jesus who is the author and the finisher of your faith because he will yes. allow your eyes to see uh, what's in that person. I'm so glad that God saw more in me than I saw in myself. Yes. And what happened was he allowed somebody else to see me and tell me about Jesus. So I don't know what you come to do tonight, but I come to rejoice in the fact that I'm part of the harvest yes, and I'm so also part of the laborers because the harvest is but the laborers are few. Are few. I said my first principle was the fact that the harvest is ready now. You waiting for something else. The but the harvest is ready now. Now. We have to see it. I don't know why people think that everybody gonna flood your church one day. That's not what's gonna happen. You got to go out there and see the souls that are in need of saving. Just like somebody talked to you about Jesus, you better be talking to somebody else about Jesus. Because you're going to do more than ever before. The second point is, see, look, I'm rolling. The harvest is plentiful. I said it's plentiful. Uh, my brothers and sisters, the word harvest is right here in the text saying that the harvest is plentiful. Which means there is a harvest that can be got. Yeah, 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 yeah. God, I must hear that by myself, dude. Uh, three, 236 times in the Bible, the word multitude is in there. Well, so uh, uh, the shortage is not in the harvest. Well, the harvest is plentiful. Uh -huh. As a matter of fact, the harvest is next door in the barber yes, shop. Yes, uh, the, the harvest is next door in the store over yes, here. Uh, the harvest is right on the sidewalk out there. The harvest is, I can't get no help around here, yeah. right up in the chair. Yeah. Oh, but we ain't trying to talk to them. Do they smell funny? Well, they're not a part of our clique, our crew, our squad. But I'm so glad the harvest is still plentiful. You just gotta open your eyes. Ah, uh, lift up your eyes. Look on the fields, because the Bible says the fields are white. And if you were country, you would know what that meant. When you see the white tops, it's time to crop that tobacco. Yeah. 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 I'm about yeah. myself because I yeah. when you yeah. see that white tops on the tops, yeah. what about you for that? Y'all scared to tell the truth? God bless your heart. God bless your heart. I know y'all know nothing about no tobacco. Nothing at all. Well, the Bible says 
that the harvest is plentiful, you can rest assured that there are plenty of folk that are in your church and outside of your church that need to know the Lord in a personal way. When you look at this text, it told us that the harvest is plentiful, which means there is a harvest. Don't get it twisted. There is a harvest. And wherever there is darkness, there is a harvest. And guess what? We're always in darkness. Yeah, I, I, I know I know some of us don't realize this, but the truth of the matter is the darker the world gets, the brighter our light should be. Uh -huh. Which means that the harvest is always going to be plenty. Yeah. The darker the world is, and we know how dark it is. Amen, somebody. Yeah. The person that hit the little boy that was getting out work by the bus yeah. did not stop because our world dark. is dark. Yeah. Uh huh. And so, uh, since the world represents, uh, since the darkness represents the world, and we represent the light yeah. of the world. I can't get no help around here. We represent the light of the world. Then we certainly know that the harvest is plentiful. Oh, Lord, have mercy. The harvest is plentiful. But we're looking down on folk. And we're looking past folk. And we're looking around folk. Instead of right and going right to them. Try and count the current of corn. Try and count the grains of wheat, and you won't be able to because we have hobby churches. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> hobby churches that see no need for the harvest because all they care about is them and them little group and their little group and their little, their little crew. Let us make sure we eat on Sundays. Well, Amen. Somebody. They ain't gonna try to feed nobody else. Yeah, if I feed somebody else, I ain't gonna have enough chicken. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> That's right now. Yeah. Because they there to just be there. That's right. They're not there for the harvest. Amen. <laughs> harvest is valuable. God places value on people. Yeah. Yeah. It's important to understand that when God so loved the world, it didn't mean that he loved certain people. He loved everybody that came on the planet. Importance, and significance, and worth is what God finds in the harvest. Again, the existence of the farmer depends upon the harvest. There are so many farms that are going down because they weren't able to have a, a yearly harvest. But I'm so glad that those farmers that kept on keeping it, kept on plowing, I still can find some organic food. I still can get some fresh tomatoes. I still can get some fresh potatoes. I can, y'all know the, the Shirley Caesar song, don't you? You name it. Uh huh. Not just numbers, but people. Not just multitude of numbers, but people. Multitudes of people, not just going the uh, 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 going to church and walking past people, but going to church and talking to people. Uh, not just doing it because you've been doing it. Uh, do it because it's productive and has purpose. Yeah, too many of us don't realize that the person you walking past is the person that's gonna give you your next blessing. You just missed your blessing because you thought that was a mess. But all the time, God takes that mess and make it a blessing. So like I heard McGinnis say. Confirm my message today. God know how to work in a mess. Well, I want to stop when you open up your mouth. My brothers and sisters, the harvest is it is plentiful. Too many of us don't realize that our God is a God of purpose, and that person has crossed your path for a purpose. <laughs> Ah, uh, but you don't know what the purpose is because you ain't got the eye. Your eyes is on you. Right, right. Me, myself. Yeah, 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 yeah. I ain't saying you did. God bless your heart. But just because you look past that person, don't realize that they're part of the harvest. Don't mean God look past them. Amen. I thought I would get an amen somewhere. Amen. For that. I, I want to help somebody that's struggling real bad yeah. in their walk with the Lord. Because I want you to understand that though you are struggling and people are looking past you, God had his eyes fixed right on you. Yeah. And I pray this help somebody in 2019. Yeah. I've said it before, but maybe you don't understand. Uh, just maybe this night, it'll speak to your spirit. Yeah. God isn't expecting perfection. God is expecting progress. God is expecting perfection. God is expecting progress. He's a God of purpose and a, a God of progress. A God of productivity. But when you just sit around on your rubber dub.
yourself. You playing all sad about yourself. You're not pressing, but you're prancing. Amen. You better start pressing and start pressing. Because the Bible says we press toward the mark for the prize of the high call of God, which is in Christ Jesus. So my brothers and sisters, stop pressing and start pressing. I can't get no help around here. Stop being depressed and start praising. I can't get no help around here. In 2019, do more praying than complaining. In 2019, do more praising than calling on everybody except God. Call on God because God knows all about your struggles. It's a 2018. must change. Yeah, yeah. It's a must, God, that, that, that we seek those that are, are not quite getting it the way we got it. I, yeah. I know y'all used to the KJV. But sometimes the NLT might speak a little bit better. Yeah. Sometimes the AMP might give them what they need. Wow. Sometimes, I can't get no help around here. Yeah. Sometimes the NIV might take them over. Yeah. Yeah. Sometimes the ESV might give them what they need. But you're trying to give them the KJV. And they say, what you talking about, sister? What you talking about, brother? I need to hear it a little more plainer. And so what I give them then is the MSG. Come on now. Because the message Bible put it right there where it belongs. Up in your face. Gallup, what's that, Pastor? Not that oil, girl. Not that oil. I'm not talking about food, amen. 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 Gallup, that's the message Bible. Amen. Oh, the Gallup was taken. Gallup was taken for over six million people. Here's what the question was: What would it take to get you to church? Yeah. Well, yeah. well. <laughs> six million people. Right. Got the Pope take it. Number one answer. Somebody to ask me to attend. Yeah. Yeah. Number one answer. Number one answer. Invitation. Invitation. Uh, 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 the workers. Well, a few. A few. Yes, sir. Because the harvest Plenty. is absolutely positive. Some are reaping all they can. Well, well. But it is not enough. Jesus believed that results are proportional to the means that's used. That's right. like so, in other words, 
It's people that harvest people. That's right. My 20 minutes is up. Ah. It's people that harvest people. Yeah. I said, I said, it's people <laughs> that harvest people. That's right. And so, how do we come to know the Lord? Well, a person. Gonna tell us. Yeah. <laughs> I said, how do we come? How did we know to come to the Lord? Yeah. A person. Well, Here is what I want to give y'all some more numbers and some more statistics. Well, well. Ways people come to the Lord. Well. Point Zero, 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 one uh, percent uh, wow. comes by TV or a crusade. Well, one to two percent come hey. by cold turkey evangelism. Yes, sir. Two to four percent uh, come by church programs. Well, Three to six percent come by Sunday school. Yes, sir. Four to six percent come by just walking in. Yes. Six to eight percent come by a minister. Yes. Uh, but seventy-four percent. People, yeah. friends, and relatives yeah. that not just talk the talk but walk the walk. Oh, Tell them that I'm gonna walk with you in this thing. You, you're not gonna be by yourself. Yeah. Oh, okay, I'm glad that when God gave the parable in the Bible about sowing seeds, yeah. that the seed fell on different grounds, yeah. and all the sower was responsible for was to sow the seed. Yeah. Yeah. And so I need workers to just be out there sowing some seeds. Stop trying to be the harvester. Stop trying to be the farmer. Uh, uh, because when you spread the seed, right. it's up to the master <laughs> to grow the seed. <laughs> one planet, yes, one water, yes, but God gives the increase. Yes, How many ass uh, for the seed? I know you want to have a whole lot to say, but here's the seed. Get them this right here. This is life changing. Transforming. Yeah. You might give them some Oprah, but Oprah ain't gonna give them something that the Bible gonna give them. You might tell them what Dr. Phil said, but Dr. Phil is still not gonna give them what the word said. You got to give them what the word said. So many spread the seed. But how many ask for the decision? You say something and you just leave them there hanging. Yeah. Make a decision. Because that's all it is. One decision. We have to hold people accountable. It's not pressuring them. It's compelling them. And the Bible says that we have to compel them. The devil does the pressuring by bringing up their past. The devil does the pressuring by highlighting their faults. The devil brings the pressure by talking about their flaws. The devil is the pressurer by talking about your mistakes. Oh, but that's not how God operates. Do you know? Do you know what God wants you to do? He wants you to love them through their faults. He wants you to love them through their flaws. He wants you to love them through their mistakes. He wants you to love them through their past. He wants you to love them through their depression. And I'm so glad that I've come to realize that when true workers have experienced the love of God, they can't help but tell somebody else. Amen. Amen. Do you not know? That some people yeah. always see the old lady in the picture, uh, uh, but never sees the young lady in the right, same picture. Right, right, right. Oh, mercy. Right. right. So this preacher, yes, sir. This, 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 this preacher gave me an example. Yeah. I found it very odd. Yeah. Uh, gave me an example. He said, "Farmer," I said, "Huh?" <laughs> <laughs> a lady came to my church dressed like a bum. Yeah, yeah. And my church just like a bum. Now here's harvest. Yeah. Workers. Just like a bum. The lady was actually a man. Mm. Came to church. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Just like a bum. They treated her like a dog. Mm. Came, in, came in his church. He mm. said, Mama, well, they came to my church. Mm. I don't know if he set this up or not, so don't, don't, they, they, they. <laughs> came in his church. Just like a bum. Yeah. She her bag. She went in his office after service. Mm -hmm. Changed her clothes. Mm -mm. Put some makeup on. Yeah. Came back out. And they felt like trash. Right, right. That's what he said. Now, I'm just going to tell y'all what he said. The truth of the matter is, too many of us yeah. looking right past yeah, yeah. the people that God yeah, yeah. wants you to minister to. That's yeah. right. So how do we get these laborers? Well, the Bible tells us, I ain't going to try to make this up. Right, mm -hmm. right. Verse 38. Yeah. It says pray. Yeah. <laughs> so y'all ready to eat. Y'all ready to sing. Y'all ready to come on and, and, and do everything but pray. pray. The Bible says pray. Yeah. You the Lord of the harvest. Uh-huh. It says pray to the Lord of the harvest. 
Therefore, because this great harvest with one problem is motivated by a harvest. And pray to the Lord of the harvest. Don't pray to the pastor. You don't pray to you pray to the Lord of the harvest. Guess why? Because it's his harvest. It's his work. It's his goodwill and his pleasure to do through you what he would have you to do. He knows what that person needs. He cares more than you can ever care. He cares more than you care. And I'm so glad that when he cared enough about me to see me out of what I was going through, he sent somebody. Come on here, boy. He sent somebody to say, Father, the Lord can use you if you want to be used. And so he sent out workers. That's what the Bible says. It says, pray ye therefore the Lord of the harvest that he will send. Yeah. Yeah, that means thrust them out. Yeah. yeah, that's what that means. That means thrust them out yeah. and they go out with force because the kingdom suffered violence <laughs> and the violence took them by force. That's so the Greek translation here Jesus. is forcefully yeah. push them out. Yeah. The same thing is what's used when Jesus cast out the devil yeah. in verse 33. That's why I brought that up. And when the devil was cast out, that's he was thrust out that's of there. The dumb spank. Multitudes marvel, saying it was never seen like this. That's why in 2019 you're gonna do more than ever before because Jesus is gonna thrust you out. He's gonna have you talking in your school. He's gonna have you talking more at work. He's gonna have you praying more. And when you get sent out, you know the message, don't you? God is good all the time and all the time. God is good. And prayer meeting going on, and you watch an empire. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, I didn't say that, did you? I said, how many times is prayer meeting going on, and you on a date? Yeah. Oh, that's why y'all don't date no more. <laughs> how many times, man, have you called for a prayer meeting, and you got one or two people, but as soon as you say we got some food? Yeah. How many times has it happened when it says something free gonna be given? When you know the nigga rent that everywhere. But as soon as we say we're gonna pray for our community, it's you, your wife, and your preachers. Maybe. Come on, say preacher. Go, my brothers and sisters, out to the harvest after you pray. And when you go out after prayer, yes, yes. you'll be like Isaiah. <laughs> I'm unqualified, but the Lord is going to use me. Yes. Here I am, Lord. Yes. Send me. Send me. I'll, go. I'll go. Woe is me. I'm, I'm undone. Yes. I'm unclean. Yes. But here I am. Yes. Send me. I'll go. Because yes. that's what I tell them about my faults. Yes. I tell them about my past. Yes. But I also tell them about my future. Yes. And I know what my future is. Because yes. I know who holds yes. my future.
like they can't witness. Right. It's because we don't know mm. just how good God is. God is. Amen. Amen. If He can save somebody like you, what you yeah. talking about? Yeah. What you talking about? Oh, I'm sorry. I, I didn't say that out loud. Yeah. Like, if He can save somebody like me, yeah. right, right. Huh. He can save anybody. anybody. Oh, yeah. Here is a problem for us. Right. We lack one thing. Mm. A desire for the harvest. That's it. Yeah, yeah. That's it. The Bible says pray to the Lord of the harvest. Right. Yeah. Therefore, Therefore, the Lord of the harvest, mm -hmm. that's right. that he will send forth laborers, yeah. Yeah. watch this, into his harvest. It's his harvest. It's his. Amen. For he gave his son for this messed up world. Yeah, yeah. Right. yeah. Glad I was able to hold my tongue. Mm. Now, here's an example for us. The Salvation Army, Deacon Gogans, mm -hmm. uses a military structure and uniforms. Right. It's not the Army. You do know that. Yeah. Right. It's called the Salvation Army. Yeah, yeah. But the military is supposed to represent order, yeah. structure, ha. Ha. discipline, mm -hmm. teamwork, trained, Jesus. respectability, fight. Camaraderie and dignity. Mm -hmm. And so many churches ain't so, got day one of them. Right. So many churches. <laughs> so many out. churches. They might have a little bit of teamwork. Yeah. Well. But ain't nobody train. Well, well. Might have a little bit of training. Right. Some order. But they ain't got no structure. Right. Come on. Now. A little bit of structure. Well. But they ain't got no fight in them. Well, well. Hey, they might got a little bit of fight in them. And I don't mean the Holy Ghost fight. Yeah. <laughs> But they lack discipline Come on now. when they fight. Yeah. And they tear people up. Mm. And guess what you call that? Mm. Church hurt. Church, Church hurt, yes. Let me help somebody tonight so that in 2019 you won't say this out of your mouth again. Yeah. The church don't hurt people. Right. right. People hurt people. Amen. Amen. I can go on and on about the military, spend enough time there. But I hope you get my drift. Yeah. Churches need to have the same concept and format Come on now. as a military. Right. We are in the army, army. of the Lord. Oh, yes. Amen. Amen. So I'm telling y'all yes, that we're going to do more. Yes, sir. Yeah. We've never done before. Ah. <laughs> the only way to do that That's right. is to know that the harvest is plentiful. Yes, sir. Yeah. Talk to the Lord of the harvest. Yes, sir. Yes. Right. And then get to work. And then get to work.